Now, Peter Christofferson led a dual life. He was talented and innovative photographer and video director who designed album covers for bands like Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. He also shot the early promotional pictures for the Sex Pistols and designed window displays for Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood's legendary King's Road shop, Sex. But under the nickname Sleazy, Peter was also a member of the controversial band Throbbing Gristle. The other band members were the performance artists Genesis P. Orridge and Cozy Fanny Tutti, and the sound engineer Chris Carter, who built his own synthesizers. Even in the punk era, Throbbing Gristle's work was provocative, with a clanking electronic sound, which they called industrial music, and lyrics which included references to serial killers, fascism, sadism and death. We spoke to Aubrey Powell, who recruited Peter to his design company Hypnosis, and to Cozy Fanny Tutti herself. She told me that she met Peter Christofferson when he came backstage after a performance she'd been giving, which involved nudity. He approached us in a rather sleazy manner, asking if he could come back for the next show and take photographs. That was when he became sleazy, because I just said, you are very sleazy. Peter Christofferson was a very enigmatic character. I don't think anybody got to know him really well. He was sort of reclusive in a way and was quite a dark character, I would say. He was quite capable of having a good laugh, but basically he was quite withdrawn. And what was the idea behind Throbbing Gristle? What was the manifesto for it, if you like? It was to um, deconstruct the notion of what music was in the 20th century or had become so that emotions were stirred and questions were asked within people rather than a sort of superficial Saturday night dance and uh, drunken time and then go home and repeat the process the next weekend which is what the music was like at the time so we wanted to give some some life back to music and some meaning if I could compare Peter Christopherson to anybody I think I'd compare him to the French surrealist Anton Arto, who used to walk around Paris with a lobster on the end of a lead. And I think that, or he created Spurt of Blood, which was the theatre where he hung offal in the ceiling of the theatre, so blood dripped on people during performances. Well, Peter was very influenced by that kind of sensationalism. It wasn't sensational to him. To him, it was making a statement. And, and, and that's how he operated. And I think he made statements for the good, not for bad. And did you want to shock people? No, it wasn't about shocking people, ironically. <laughs> it did shock some people, but we just wanted, if you like, to short circuit people's notion of what music could be. Were people angered by, by the performances? In, in some ways, but it wasn't anger at us. The first thing to do when you don't understand something is to kick against it, and we were the people they kicked against. He upset me sometimes, you know. I didn't particularly approve of him going to shoot his album cover in Auschwitz, for example. I didn't particularly approve of some of the antics that they got up to within Throbbing Gristle. I have to say, he and I sometimes had differences about it because I was concerned that it would affect my image of my company and I remember arguing with him it was incredibly distasteful and he said look if you don't put this in a place where it can be seen then nobody's going to view it and nobody's going to understand it it's brushing it under the carpet yet again. Initially Peter funded his music by directing mainstream TV commercials and working as a photographer. He became a partner in the celebrated design company Hypnosis and worked on album covers for Factory Records, Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. In Presence is a Led Zeppelin cover in which a black object, a uh, rather phallic black object, appears in the centre of a series of images that are taken from National Geographic 1950s photographs. And Peter added something to this because we reshot the photographs for real. And what he did was he created a mood and an atmosphere that was incredibly science fiction like, really, really menacing. And at the same time, it was his idea not to shoot the black object in situ, but to actually paint it over the image so it was flat, two dimensional. And this made the image jump out of you, like, and it had a very dark and menacing feel about it. So again, it was an example where he would do something 
and create something which not only had beauty, but also had a menacing quality to it. And I, th that's how he was, I think. He was very skillful at, at twisting ideas around in a way to make them uncomfortable, but at the same time, beautifully photographed. He moved from different situations, Sleazy, so he had a huge pool of experiences to draw from. He had a passion for life and any experiences and discovery of the unorthodox, totally of the unorthodox. He just wanted to experience new things, learn new things, present new things to people. And he did that all through his life right until the end. I know that in the last few years he's had no interest in what happened in his early career with the images that he did with hypnosis of Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin, he showed no interest in that at all. He showed no interest in any of the music videos he shot, of which he shot thousands. But the music stuck with him, and I think he would want to be remembered for the music he made. The music of Throbbing Gristle featuring Peter Christofferson, who's died aged 55.